All right, guys, Andrew Burr here. Let's uh, talk about the new laws governing real estate across the nation. And specifically, let's go ahead and look at the new um, actual, the, the new forms. So we're going to start there. I'm sharing my screen with you right now. And we are going to talk about first the listing agreement. Now, of course, this is my company's listing agreement, but they're all going to have uh, the same things in common and particularly when it comes to the laws. Um, they're all going to have a uh, term uh, of the agreement. They're all going to set forth what uh, we are going to do and what our obligations are uh, to sell the property, have some basic information about the home, um, what's included in the sale, what's not included in the sale, uh, how we are going to interact on behalf of the seller for the buyer, uh, terms like withhold verbal offers, uh, withhold offers. So things like this, this is, this is all stuff that was in there before, like withhold verbal offers in the state of Florida, technically, and I don't know why, uh, verbal offers are still legal, um, according to the statutes, but I don't think that I've ever seen one hold up and I don't think I would ever, um, want to give anybody a verbal offer because, uh, I've never heard of one actually working out. So we usually click that withhold verbal offers, um, withhold all offers once we accept the contract. No, we, if we've got a contract and they want a backup contract, we'll absolutely keep looking. So anyways, and there's some opt out stuff. Um, this, I don't know if it's universal, but you know, we have seller does not authorize, uh, the guys coming to display property on the MLS. You don't ever want to do stuff like that because then it pulls you after all the distributions. You won't be on Zillow, realtor.com, homes.com or any of the 500 or so related sites. Here's where the change is. And this is in the state of Florida, there were only two changes um, that because the state of Florida has different laws than this was a national agreement. Like oh, this is all national new laws, right? But each state had their own real estate laws. Some states like California do real estate completely differently than us. Uh, and the state where this occurred, there was different laws. Our rules here in the state of Florida always had a delineation of the total commission and what percentage of that is going to be offered to a uh, buyer broker. Now we've just had to change the form and how it says that. It says the same thing, just in a different way. So basically, uh, on this side here, the the, the top uh, part of the form here is what the you know quote unquote listing side of the commission would be, and then this next section is what the uh, seller is offering to a buyer side uh, broker. So you know nothing has really changed. There's been a lot of uh, stuff in the news about different things and this and that and the other but a lot of it doesn't apply to florida so it's not and you know and some of it's just complete click bait and factually wrong i mean i can't believe some of the news that has come out of some of the larger institutions that's completely wrong but i guess that's the world we live in these days so anyways um you know the, the, there's stuff in there and again this this is the, the only the only thing right here that's changed in the law and only it's mandated by law is section four right here the way it's laid out and we've actually got other, uh, and you can say that you don't want to offer compensation to the buyer's burger if you don't want to, but that's always been the law and isn't it? that hasn't changed. Um, so and we, you know, if you want more information on opinions, go to you know my uh, YouTube page or something like that, the Andrew Burr Group with YouTube. Got plenty of that there too, but this is just basically factual stuff. Um, and again, I, the rest of the stuff is not uh, all necessarily mandated. It's more Florida law. Um, you know, if you want to use the title company that we have, or you want to use a different title company, uh, things like that. So anyways, the rest of this, uh, is basically, and then you, all of them have to have a, a agreement to, uh, you know, to cancel the contract and spell it out in the contract, what that, uh, what that, those terms are. And that's right here. Um, basically. Yeah, so there, there's then there's also stuff that you know uh, that the seller is required to do based on this. Uh, and here's one of the things that that uh, is going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Transaction broker notice. State of Florida for years and years we've been assumed to be transaction brokers. Um, other states have had different things, but now um, my understanding is that part of the part of the, the new national law is that all all realtors are now going to be transaction brokers. Uh, unless specifically uh, created otherwise, and there's a separate document for like a single agent and stuff. So, but this is always this has been boilerplate for us for a long time. 
Uh, and it's always said, basically, carefully read all the, you know, carefully read it. If you don't understand, consult the attorney. All this stuff's always been in our documents. Um, and, you know, I don't even know if this is state law right now, but every single, uh, and I've, I've been with three different brokerages, and they've all had the same sort of, uh, you know, pointing out, hey, if you don't understand this, don't sign it or get, you know, get the advice of an attorney before you sign it. So I'm fairly sure that's Florida law, or else, uh, you know, some people wouldn't put it there. All right. So. Let's talk about how this, let's go back up to the section that is the section that changed. And again, this is the only uh, only change right here. Section four is just the way that this is laid out. And we can no longer advertise what the seller is offering to a buyer's brokerage uh, on the MLS, which is, uh, you know, again, I've got an opinion on that, but go to the YouTube channel and you can check out that video about that opinion and hundreds more. The next thing that happens is that now we have these other forms that, in addition, now have to be filled out and signed by the uh, sellers because there's two different ways um, that sellers can compensate the buyer's broker. They can either compensate them directly through um, what we're calling uh, concessions, or they can have the buyer's broker you know, pay it all to the buyer broker and the buyer broker can distribute it. There's a separate form that has to be signed, a separate listing agreement. Uh, depending on which one of these forms you want to use. Um, but this is just letting you know that you're going to see these forms now. There's no, you have to, this to be law, right? Um, again, there's tons of uh, different, uh, you know, opinions and, and, and you know, what are cause and effect kind of things going to be. And, and again, I have, uh, you know, my opinions and those are all elsewhere. This is strictly just to educate you that this is what is happening. This is what has happened. And there's also a landlord, uh, I spelled it, I apologize, broker to uh, the tenants broker. So that now what happened here is that there was a lot of confusion because everybody thought that we had to go with the new buyer broker agreements that are bylaw mandated, which I have a separate video in the educational section uh, if you're interested in the buyer broker stuff. But now they're saying that, no, we don't have to do that with a tenant, um, but we can. And now this compensation agreement. So basically, they're kind of saying, "Oh, we well, nothing. We didn't change anything on rentals, but we kind of thought we were gonna, or whatever." I don't. So you're gonna see now a lot of confusion with that. You're gonna see different forms. Some people will use this. Some people won't. Um, but the new laws affect only purchasing and selling. And again, for sellers, the only thing is that has changed is how we lay this out on this form, right? Uh, that you have to, by law, give the options, right? Including no compensation offered by buyer's broker, which again was always an option. Um, and now we may no longer, may no longer advertise this amount on the multiple listing service. Okay. That is the only change in the law. That's it. So uh, all the other stuff you're, you're, you're hearing, this right here, this right here, and the fact that we can no longer uh, advertise the amount that the seller is offering to a buyer's broker on the MLS is the only change for sellers in the state of Florida. All right, so uh, I hope that was educational and I hope you learned something or at least you have a little heads up now. Uh, if you got questions, comments, all that kind of stuff, obviously we love to hear them. And make sure that you get with a real estate professional that knows what's going on with the new rules. Because I'll tell you right now, there are realtors out there that don't even know the rules have changed. And I don't know how that happened, but I've already had to deal with a couple. This went into law about a week ago here. We actually in the Florida Keys, uh, August 6th. And here on the 17th is where the 12th is when we changed it over. Um, and I will, I'm telling you right now, there's agents that don't know that the law has changed. So make sure your agent knows what's going on. We'll talk to you guys again soon. This is Andrew Burr, Realtor Extraordinary. And I am based in uh, beautiful, sunny South Florida, but this is a national law. So all this stuff I'm talking to you about uh, goes all the way across the nation. So have a great one.